So I appreciate you coming. I'm Brian Peskin. How many people uh, heard me on Jeff's show? Good, good. So you're hearing this for the first time. Well, this presentation was given to a couple hundred doctors about two weeks ago. So you're going to see the same material they get, and they were really, really shocked, especially about fish oil, because that's the biggest supplement in America right now, and it's actually a poison in the dosages doctors in the medical profession are prescribing. So it's called Power of the Parents Plant-Based EFAs. And big problem we have today is, should we do the lights? Make it a little easier? Biggest problem we have today is cause-effect relationships are mandatory. And they typically don't do them. They do what's called epidemiology. So over at Harvard, you'd have somebody in the medical school with the sun arising at 6 a.m. You get up at 6 a.m pretty much it turns into you made the sun come up at 6 a.m. But if you do the real experiment, you do 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., lo and behold, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever what time you get up, the sun's already there. So cause-effect relationships are key, and most studies don't have them. You're misled, the doctor's misled, they think it's one thing and it's another, and it's a very, very bad state of affair. So you need two sciences, theoretical physiology, it's in cell membrane structure, that's a brick and mortar, just like you're building a house, and acosinoids, acosinoids are derivatives made from these parent oils that are like hormones, except they don't hit the bloodstream, they're extremely powerful, we'll talk about that. So it's clinical physiology and biochemistry, this is epigenetic, it has nothing to do with genetic-based solutions and it's an adjuvant, it can be used with anything anybody's doing because it's so fundamental and I tend to give state-of-the-art medical science physicians haven't seen before. I don't waste time regurgitating what they already know. My job is to go into medical journals and you know, scientific physiology journals that they never see. So they're reading New England Journal of Medicine, JAMA, maybe Lancet, I'm looking at theoretical biochemistry, essential fatty acids, prostaglandins, and leukotri. They never look at this, so they never get the real good stuff. So clinical practice is often at least 20 years out of date. Scurvy was 150. All these poor sailors died. Nobody listened. Cancer, they're saying, is hundreds of diseases. Otto Warburg showed conclusively it's one. Anybody hear Otto Warburg, that name? You even know him? And colleges don't even know him. Number one physiologist, MD, PhD, Nobel Prize winner. One cause. Heart disease, they say, is saturated fat, right? There's no saturated fat in the clogged artery, zero. Can measure it. High resolution chromatography. So the cardiologist you go to probably doesn't even know that. He's telling you don't eat bacon. Bacon's not going to clog your artery at all. Nobel laureates, Marshall and Warren, they had the stomach ulcer. 2005 Nobel Prize, that it's inflammation. Before then, they were laughed at until they won the Nobel Prize. That shut the detractors up. So Nobel Prize winning physicist Max Planck said, unfortunately, a new scientific truth doesn't triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die off and a new generation grows up familiar with it. So what your doctor is telling you today is 20 years out of date. That's the typical average, how far behind they are. It's tragic. So superiority of plant-based oils, these are seed oils. Sunflower seeds, evening primrose oil, flax oil, pumpkin seed, coconut oil. These are seed-based oils and they're what we need, not fish oil because you're not living in the sea at 30 degrees. So that our essential have to come from food, there's two types, LA, ALA, parent omega-6, parent omega-3, the technical stuff doesn't matter. What you need to know is there's two series. One's way more important than the other, and I'll tell you why and about it. They gotta come from food. So your body can't make them. It's the biggest deficiency we have, and nobody's talking about it. So you have 100 trillion cells. Half of every cell is fat. The other half is protein. Out of the fat side, 25% to 33%, quarter to a third is parent essential oils. So they're critical. Mitochondria, which is the cellular power plant, has hundreds to thousands in every cell. And the key component is called cardiolipin. It's 100% parent omega-6. 
There's no parent omega-3 and there's no DHA EPA from fish oil in there at all. It's all the parent omega-6 and it better be fully functional and working or you've got hundreds of millions of cells that are defective. They're defective, what would you get? I don't know, but I guess I'd get a lot of problems. Well, gee, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, they're all astronomical. There's no end in sight. And this is why we have food processing. So here's one that just came out and it's a big one. Secretory cells, like a pancreatic cell, it spits out insulin. You have a lot of cells that respond with hormones are hypersensitive to changes of their membrane lipids, the fat structure, and this is a quote, induced by the diet. So it's saying what you eat changes how that cell is, and the cells can sense adulterated oils, and they respond with stress and chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is the number one problem. If you have inflammation going on day and night, heart disease and cancer, absolutely maybe diabetes, but heart disease and cancer, the number one, number two killers, they suck up the oxygen. And the cell membrane can sense this, that it's wrong. So it turns out the food processors on the omega-6 side have to adulterate it. And we'll talk about that. But first, a little more about cancer with Warburg's theory of cancer and supported by the National Cancer Institute. Major abnormalities in the cardiolipin content was found in all tumors. So here's a case, every tumor has this problem. Remember I said cause effect? This is what I'm looking for. Here's a problem, every case has the problem. And it's irreversible. So it means I can't bring a cancer cell back. If it's a fully cancerous cell, if it's benign, or if it's in the middle, you can do something. But once you have a fully cancerous cell, it's there forever. You have to kill it or rip it out, so that's surgery, radiation, you know, which is very problematic. But once you have a fully cancerous cell, it's over, it's turned. What's cardiolipin? It's fat-based, it's intimately involved in energy production. This thing has 20% lipids in the cardiolipin and the main component by far is the parent omega-6. There's no omega-3 and there's no omega-3 derivatives. So an EFA is an essential fatty acid. That's what these things are. I don't like the term. I like parent essential oil because EFA is used wrongly. There's parents and derivatives. Derivatives are made by the parents. Derivatives can't go backwards and make parents. So if you have parent omega-6 and parent omega-3, it makes the derivatives. These are the only two. DHA and EPA from fish are not EFAs. They are not essential. You have all these people in the medical profession calling them EFAs. They're lying to you and it's wrong. They're not. And here's the big one, 21st century newsflash. Less than 1% of the parent oils are converted to derivatives. They used to think the majority was. So it was, let's be easy on the body and give it derivatives like fish oil so it doesn't have to make them from the omega-3. We're being very good. Well, you're giving an enormous overdose you need very, very little of derivatives. So 99% stay in parent form. They're the brick and mortar of the cell. Very important. So fish oil can't and doesn't work. We're getting a pharmacological overdose. A 100 milligram capsule is 16 times the daily brain requirement. A 1,000 milligram capsule is 138 times. That's one capsule. You have doctors and nutritionists telling people to take three to five grams a day. That's a 300 to 400, 500 times overdose. And here's the proof that it doesn't work. There's three pharmaceutical companies that sell fish, fish oil, pharmaceutical grade fish oil as a drug. Omicor, Espanova, Vesepa, there's at least three of them. They can only get one indication, lowering super high triglycerides. They can get no indication for it helping heart disease, for it helping cancer, for it helping macular degeneration, for it helping dry eyes, for Alzheimer's, for anything. And if there's one thing a drug company does, it's run drug trials. They've all failed. So what do you have? You have the nutritional company saying how great fish oil is and how it does everything. Well, if a pharmaceutical company can't get it passed, they're lying to you. Remember I said cause effect? They're not doing cause effect, they're doing epidemiologic associations that are worthless. And just this week, not this week, but this year, major one came out, fish oil failed for dry eye. That was their big thing. Take DHA from fish 
and it's going to help dry eye. National Institutes of Health did a study, absolutely failed. They gave three grams, which is a ton of it. They looked at it three different ways. It was superb, and it absolutely failed. They did one in kids. They're always saying, younger kids, you give DHA fish oil. It makes them smarter, makes them read better. That failed. Horrible. And a big one just came out. You heard me talk about it on Jeff's show, that fish oil ruins the mitochondria in the heart. Another one, derivatives are made as needed. The amounts of parent omega-3 are easily achieved in the general population by dietary modification, meaning you take it as a supplement, get the parent, it makes the derivatives. There's no problem with the conversion. By the way, there's 2,600 times more parent omega-3 than DHA and EPA, than derivatives. 20, not 2,600%, 2,600 times. That's how much more important the parents are, and nobody talks about them. Here's one you never saw. Cod liver oil significantly increases skin cancer. Melanoma is the worst skin cancer. This was a superb trial. It was in 1997. It was in Norway. There was about three times the incidence of melanoma in the women taking cod liver oil. Now, a factor of three is huge. That should really, really get your attention. It's considered to be real and not due to chance. That's the quote from that article. And that was published in the International Journal of Cancer. I've never seen this referenced anywhere. The follow-up time was 12 years. It was unbiased. It was all collected prior to any cancer. There was total follow-up with pathology through the cancer registry. So a lot of times, oh, it's cancer. I think it is, but it really isn't. No, this was done by a pathologist. It's cancer. It's easy to tell. So this was as superb as you could ever get. It's not due to chance. That's what it says. The increase is considered not a word of this. No fish oil company will want you to see that one. Parent omega-3 was anti-heart disease. The parent omega-3 is associated with lower risk of a heart attack. And they looked at different levels of fish oil. Didn't make any difference at all. It was all the parent omega-3, how much fish oil you took. And there's reasons for that, because fish oil doesn't make up anything to do with the heart. It's insane. So fish or DHA EPA intake at the levels found did not modify the observation, meaning it was irrelevant. I could have no fish oil, I could have a ton of fish oil. All that counted was the parent. And here was a huge one, 2018, this just came out and I talked about it on Jeff's show. Ruins cardiac mitochondria. The mitochondria is the energy producer, so your heart needs a heck of a lot of energy because it's beating 100,000 100, times a day, boom, boom. So 18.2, which is parent omega-6 rescues, and this is a quote, the damage done by long-term intake of DHA. If this doesn't get a cardiologist's attention and scares the hell out of them, I don't know what will. It's not the loss of the parent omega-6 alone that does the problem. It's the replacement of the omega-6 by the super pharmacologic overdose of the DHA in the fish oil. So you're getting overdosed with a poison and it's ruining the energy production. And then they looked at diabetic patients. Diabetic patients have 70% higher DHA levels in the blood than a normal person. So whenever you do these blood analysis, and they look at DHA and EPA and AA and all the stuff, they want you to be off the charts for fish oil, because they're insane. Well, they're making you simulate a diabetic. Does anybody think that's a good idea? If there's one thing you don't want to be, it's a diabetic. So just think how stupid this is. They are telling you you want the blood chemistry of a diabetic. They're insane. So the plant seed oils are anti-diabetes. They gave oily fish to people, you know, like a mackerel or something, and then they gave a non-oily fish, like a cod. The non-oily fish was better. You don't want the fish oil, meaning you had to produce more insulin to get the same level of blood sugar, and that's what you don't want. That's called insulin resistance. Insulin gets the sugar out of the system. Glucose area under the curve, that just means, you, you know, how much insulin you need for the sugar was greater the reduction. So you want low blood sugars was better with the parent omega-6. That's what you want. 
It's anti-aging, reduced risk of cancer, the parent omega-6, the higher it was in the bloodstream, the less problem prostate cancer for the guys, less dementia, the parent omega-3 is depleted in patients with dementia, less cardiovascular risk, the fatty streaks, deficiency of fully functional parent omega-6, and we'll talk more about that. So food processors never use omega-3 cooking oils. You're never cooking flax. It goes bad too fast. It smokes right away. It burns. So they never use that. So the flax, the omega-3 side, that's not adulterated. All of it is in parent omega-6. So that's the canola oil, the sunflower oil, the safflower oil, the olive oil. Olive oil doesn't have a lot of parent omega-6. It's about 7%. But all the cooking oils, unless you get organic, are going to be adulterated. And that's where all the problem is. So the American Heart Association knew omega-6 wasn't bad. And a lot of people say we're overdosed on omega-6. We're overdosed on adulterated omega-6 because you have to have long shelf life. That's why margarine can stay in a garage for a year and no fungus, no mold, no bacteria, no virus, nothing. And nothing will even eat it. Not a bug, nothing, because they're smarter than us and know it's going to kill them. They won't touch it. So all of it is... The American Heart Association says omega-6 is no problem. And if you think it is, it reflects a rather naive understanding of the biochemistry. That's a quote. If you think omega-6 is the problem, you have a naive understanding of biochemistry. And then it says omega-6 derivatives have a powerful anti-inflammatory property that counteracts any inflammation property. Now, you have to have inflammation. If I cut you with a knife, you're going to bleed like hell, and you better be inflamed because that stops it. So anybody that tells you you want no inflammation is an idiot. You have to have something that causes inflammation when it's needed. What you don't want is non-productive inflammation. And if you have the adulterated omega-6 cooking oils, they're oxidized, they're inflammatory because the cell membrane can sense a defective oil in there and it stays inflamed. And chronic inflammation sucks oxygen. That's why the cancer problem, that's why the heart disease problem, it's non-productive. So once again, 2017 confirmed it itself. The parent omega-6 and arachidonic acid is the thing they're always saying it's horrible. AA, if you ever hear it or see it, that's what they say is inflammatory. And they measured C-reactive protein, which is a measure of inflammation. Parent omega-6 did nothing to it. Arachidonic acid did nothing to it. And as a matter of fact, it was the opposite. The higher the parent omega-6, the less inflammation. That's the bottom red, and that's as strong as you get. Nobody wants to be inflamed. Nobody wants inflammation. Fish oil damages cellular mitochondria. I told you it wrecked the cardiac mitochondria, and that's by as much as 50%. wasn't on the thing, but it was in the paper I read. Well, fish oil ruined kidney cells by 40% reduction. So fish oil is a poison. When I say it's a poison, it's a poison. How much is in the bloodstream? Well, the parent omega-6 to parent omega-3 on the bottom, the third thing there, 8.5 to 1, 17.5 to 1, 115 to 1, 100 to 1. The point of that is it's a huge preponderance of parent omega-6. You want lots of it. When you analyze cell tissue and organs, it's 11 to 1 in the body. We need 11 times more parent omega-6 than parent omega-3. So don't listen to anybody telling you we're overdosed on omega-6. We're overdosed on adulterated, ruined omega-6. And just so you know, the cholesterol in the bloodstream, 80 to 90% is esterified. That just means it's magnetized. So you have LDL, right? Everybody's heard about that. That's why he's a statin to get, bring it down to nothing, right? Well, LDL is magnetized to these oils. That's how it goes in the bloodstream. So it's the transport system. So if you take a statin, you lower the adulterated oils, that's like a trans fat, that's like margarine, because you have adulterated oils, so the food doesn't go bad. That's why the food processors do it. So if you walk in the fish department at a supermarket and they'll typically smell, that's oxidized oils, that's called rancidity. Well, that's what happens with the omega-6 oils, so they ruin them, it's called an adulteration, different ways to do it. They don't go bad, but if they don't go bad, they don't give us oxygen transfer. And that's the key to everything. We need the oxygen going in there. So 85% of an arterial clog is the adulterated parent omega-6 oils that you ate. 
They don't go bad in the body. There's enough antioxidants in the body. They don't go bad in the body. They're going bad in the food you ate. So we're killing ourselves. Most cardiologists don't know this. They're saying it's low fat. It's not the low fat. It's the adulterated parent omega-6 that the food processors are ruining. So we did a test in 2015, a screening experiment. You took people taking fish oil, stopped it, then gave them the parent essential oils, and biologically the age of the arteries was 10 years younger, actually 11 years younger, which is incredible. And that's based on blood flow. So to get good blood flow, you need three things. You need a good size level of the artery, the vessel, so you get a lot of blood. You can't have a blockage, so there's no occlusion, and you need it flexible, so that's arterial flexibility. A decade younger. Fish oil made you worse. Fish oil's anti-aging, 11 years. And once again, they're oxidized from food processing. Oxygen transfer stops. Heart disease comes in. The artery is like a straw, and the inner layer of that straw is parent omega-6. It's all parent omega-6. Now, if you're eating fast food, if you're eating even restaurant food that has these oils that are ruined, that inner lining of the artery is now adulterated. It doesn't work. It's going to start clogging up. That's an oxidized cholesterol. It's not the cholesterol itself that oxidized. It's the parent essential oils, the PEOs, that are magnetized to it that oxidize. But when they look at it, they look at it as one big thing. They don't break it down. You've got to be very careful with this. So the culprit in the food supply is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's all the processed food. So if you're going to spend money, make damn sure it's organic oils. So sunflower oil, safflower oil, olive oil, organic. Or else you're going to give yourself cancer and heart disease. So anything with the fats you want to make sure is good. Butter, organic. Eggs, organic. You don't want the chickens having pesticides and hormones. They ruin things. So big bang for the buck is in that. <clears throat> How does this work? I'm always asking pathways. So when anybody tells you anything, sir, what is the metabolic pathway? How it did it? What? What is the metabolic pathway? Where do you get the result? How the heck am I getting that result, you said? You're saying it prevents heart disease with fish oil. How? It doesn't with fish oil. It gives you heart disease. But with this, you can tell, PGE1 is the body's most potent anti-inflammatory. And that's the omega-6 side. That's right in the top there, first one in red. Prostacyclin, PGI2, is the body's natural blood thinner. And that's the next side, omega-6. The omega-3 side, there's nothing in red. They're not strong. The omega-3 side is about 5% as strong as the omega-6 side. So everything is in the omega-6. And very few foods have any omega-3. Seafood has omega-3, but getting extra DHA, EPA does nothing. It's actually harmful. You can eat fish, you can eat sh you know, seafood, but you don't want the oils by themselves. See, that's a processed food. That's not the way nature intended us to get it. In non-seafood, very few things have omega-3. Lettuce has a lot of it. Grass has a lot of it. We're not eating much grass. But uh, we don't need a lot of omega-3. We do need a lot of omega-6. So the omega-6 series is significantly more powerful than the omega-3 series. This is the key point. The whole thing with fish oil, they said, oh, it's an anti-inflammatory. It's because if you take DHA and EPA, it displaces the omega-6. And because they mistakenly thought omega-6 is inflammatory, it's better because it's knocking it out. Does it do anything on its own? No. But it's knocking this bad stuff out. And that's wrong. It's like 2 and 2 is 12 based on something wrong. It's not. So nature's natural statin is prostacyclin, which is the omega-6 side. And it's made from arachidonic acid, so it's very, very good. And PGE1, so if you have arthritis, if you have any kind of inflammation, if you have a blockage in the artery, PGE1 dissolves it. It's a vasodilator. It naturally makes your blood vessel bigger. And it makes it flexible. And never forget, the inner lining of the wall is one cell thick of parent omega-6. So it's not like it's real big. It's one little layer. It's 
easy to screw that up. So if it's not fully functional, you're going to be in trouble. Fish oil has limited effects. Basically, it acts like a, uh, a steroid. And a steroid lowers the heck out of your immune system. And in 2000, it was published it decreases the immune system. And here's quotes. Fish oil decrease a wide range of immune cell responses. Recent studies have indicated that low levels of omega-3 bring about these suppressive effects. So they said it. Never seen anybody reference that. Low doses, problematic. Here's Otto Warburg, absolute mega genius in the field. Cancer is always caused by long-term deprivation of oxygen. So I put together why are we getting the cellular deprivation of oxygen, not the bloodstream. Pulse oximeter, everybody has you know, 96 to 99 percent blood oxygen in the, in the bloodstream. That's irrelevant. Why are we not getting the oxygen into the cell? It's because of the adulteration of the omega-6 in the cell membrane. There's one prime cause, lack of oxygen. That's also the prime cause of heart disease. And all secondary causes, asbestos, smoking, all go back to the prime cause. So what does smoking do? It inflames the heck out of everything because it's hot and it's chemicals. Asbestos, it irritates. So whenever you have inflammation, you have lack of oxygen because the inflammation takes the oxygen. So now there's a deficiency of oxygen somewhere else. You can fix that. So this was uh, Dr. Campbell back in 1976. Restoration of the fatty acid composition, meaning you get the adulterated fats out and the fully functional omega-6 in. Enhances the supply of oxygen. Interference with oxygen could occur at any cell membrane. That's why cancer can be anywhere. It's the same thing. There's one cancer. It's all the same cause. There are not 200 causes of cancer or 200 kinds of cancer. That's beyond stupid. But they give you extra complexity. They're making a simple thing very complex, and it's really sinful. And parent omega-6 deficiency leads to decrease in the availability of cellular oxygen. That's the cardiolipin in the mitochondria. So the plant-based oils are oxygen magnets. The omega-6 is an oxygen magnet, and that's what you want. Here's confirmation. There is always lack of oxygen in cancer. The worse the cancer is, the greater the oxygen deficiency. It's called hypoxia, and this is back in 1993, they all knew it. Partial pressure of oxygen predicts survival in advanced cancer of the uterus. Oxygen, neck and head, same thing. Tumor oxygenation, prognosis independently of everything else tumor hypoxia. So it's known everywhere. They don't know how to increase the oxygen. So you can focus on cancer prevention. A lot of people, for physicians, remember this was for physicians. So it's an adjuvant. You just add it to anything you're doing. So chemotherapy, radiation, the parent essential oils make it work better because the more oxygen, the better chemo or radiation works. We have a lot of cancer patients that do phenomenal with this. It reverses and prevents cardiovascular disease. It will even reverse a clogged artery. Any and all surgery, 25 to 50% faster healing. We're very shortly gonna be doing a major study at MD Anderson Cancer Hospital, Cancer Institute in Houston, biggest cancer center in the world. Department of Plastic Surgery, the biggest plastic surgery department in the world to heal the patients faster. It's going to be very exciting. So we're hoping to start that pretty quick. Here's everything parent essential oils do. does a lot. What ratio is best? You need a few things. They're bioidentical to what the body is. Flax oil is good for the omega-3, but not the omega-6. Safflower, sunflower are very good for the parent omega-6 part. You want a ratio of more parent omega-6 to parent omega-3 to mimic the body. You want no fish oil. I like having a conservative amount of GLA so you bypass that enzyme. It's called the delta-6 desaturase enzyme. This is what they'll always tell you. Oh, the conversion of the parent, omega-3, to the derivatives, DHE, EPA, is slow or impeded. In individuals, it's not. In people with chronic disease like diabetes, cancer, alcoholics, it will be down a little. So by putting the GLA in, you bypass that pathway, and it's not needed. So this guarantees maximum PGE1 output. It's a few things. You need the high parent omega-6 variety of omega-6. 
They've ruined it now for all the cooking oil people and the food processors. They give what's called oleic acid. That's omega-9, like olive oil. Olive oil is worthless for your health. It's a zero. Trans fat, margarine's a negative 20. Olive oil's a zero. It won't hurt you, but it won't help you. The parent essential oils are a 20. You sure as heck don't want a negative 20. I don't want a zero. I want the 20. So you want very little parent omega-9, not parent omega, it's omega-9, because your body can make it. There's some naturally occurring in all oils, so you're always going to get a small amount of parent omega-9. It's not parent, I'm so used to the parents of omega-9, because your body can make it. But you don't want to be taking a lot of olive oil. You don't need it. Do we get too much omega-6 in the food? We get too much adulterated omega-6 in the food. Not too much omega-6. Tissue-wise, you need 11 to 1. 11 times more parent omega-6 than parent omega-3 is in the tissue in our organ. So we need lots of it. But you always have to keep in mind 50% at least is ruined. That's why margarine can sit in the garage for a year and again, nothing touches it. No bacteria, no virus, no mold, no mildew, and nothing will eat it. So a lot of it is non-functional. Then they'll say parent omega-6 promotes tumors. That's not true. What they do is animal trials and they give adulterated omega-6 in the mouse chow. I know because I did a mouse study with tumors and I had the food analyzed because I wanted to see what the heck are we giving them. And it was six times too much ruined omega-6. It was highly, highly oxidized, which means it's cancer-causing. So they're giving the mouse a cancer-causing food and it gives them cancer. Brilliant. Uh, these kind of mistakes are just intolerable to somebody like me. So there's three things that everybody really needs. The fundamental thing is the oils. You can put the lights on if you want, then I'm done with this. But you need the oils. There's nine minerals that aren't in the soil anymore, at least eight. And the reason is they don't use organic fertilizer. So nature's very good. So the cow eats stuff from the ground, eats the plants. Then it goes to the bathroom and fertilizes the plants. And they're not doing that anymore. They're using synthesized fertilizers. So we're not getting the minerals, even though the plant looks good. The way humans get minerals is typically from an animal. An animal eats the plant and we eat the animal. We don't absorb minerals from cellulose. They're bound to it. We don't have four stomachs like a cow. So a plant-based diet is not going to give you the minerals. They're not in the soil anymore. And then everybody needs a detoxifier to minimize the junk we're eating that you don't want. For example, all the chickens, antibiotics and hormones. I don't care if they say they don't feed it to them. That's a lie. They do feed it to them, and you're getting it, and there is residues. So all the hormone and steroid residues from the animals we eat get stored in our fat. So if you ever go on a diet, you start burning your own fat. That's the <laughs> reason for the diet. All those toxins are released. So this is why when people start a diet, they usually feel horrible. So the best thing to do is a detoxifier, and it's Essiac, and I like that formulation. There's a lot of writing about it, and I like adding a herb called cat's clot to it. It's the best upper respiratory optimizer there is. So it's a very, very good blood cleaner. What's in the blood that shouldn't be there, it gets rid of it. So two positives that you need is the oils, because there's food processing, the minerals, because that's not in the soil anymore, and then one thing to minimize the negatives in the food, the junk we don't want, is zero. Those are the only three supplements 99% of the world needs. Anything else may have a use. Most of them are pure nonsense. Um, unfortunately, the nutritional supplement market is one of the biggest con jobs. There is, you know, my joke is if you have a voice product, you can sell it to the nutritional supplement market because people are so desperate. That's why I'm so tough. It, you know, I very empathetic to, to people because there's no way in heck that you can know any of this stuff. This is all I do day and night. I specialize in the oils. And, you know, because I started right in the center, anywhere you go is going to be right. Everybody else is on the circumference of a circle, and you're not getting back to the center. You go from the center out. It's like the parent oils. You go from the parents to the derivatives, but you're not going from the derivatives to the parents. So, my science is very consistent. There's a book out there called PEO Solution, Parent Essential Oil Solution. 
I really hope you get that and read it. It's written for doctors, but it's very readable. Very readable. And I uniquely give the medical journal or the medical textbook where this came from right on the page, and I give you the quotes, what was said. Because most people writing books don't do that. They make up what they want you to think it said. It never said it. This happens way more than you would think. So I'm very big on giving you the exact words. And if I have to translate it because it's too technical, I'll do that. But you will see what was said. And it's going to make you sick with how manipulated we are. This is your health. If it was anything else, I wouldn't care too much. But when you're spending money and you're obviously spending your time, my job is to give doctors the world's best medical science they haven't seen before. I typically do my, my work for doctors. Um, because if you get a doctor, he has hundreds of patients, so I, I don't have time to be talking to a lot of individuals. I mean, I'll do it, but it's not my main thing. So it's writing in medical journal articles, and now we're doing studies like at MD Anderson, which is exciting as the Dickens. It's, it's, it's enormous. Um, so three things I hope you all get, but I really hope you get the book and read that. There's also one called 24-Hour Diet, if losing weight or diet or if you're diabetic. That was written for doctors to give to their diabetic patients with how the heck do I fix type 2 diabetes quick and easy, and you'll be amazed what's in there. The material is all consistent. It's just different viewpoints. One is for your health. One is really pounding how you lose weight and how your appetite stays fulfilled. Not suppressed, fulfilled. So there, there, there's some cool science there. So I'm, I'm sure you got some questions. Um, happy to answer them if I can. Fish oil. Yeah. What generated the big push in, in fish oil? Excellent question. I was there when it started. Where the heck did this nonsense yeah. come from? Why? A lot of spoiled fish. What the hell do I do with it? That's exactly where it came from. When this started, I was at some health fair shows. And I would ask the distributors, is anybody buying this stuff? No. Took about 10 years and millions and millions of dollars to con everybody that you needed fish oil. So the way I think about this is, well, wait a minute. When there was no fish oil thing in 1950, 1940, 1930, 1960, did we have gross vision problems where everybody was running around blind? No. Were they stupid as heck because they had no brain power? Because your brain does have DHA in it. Was there a deficiency? No. So what the hell are you talking about? It was all made up. It was all made up from a waste product. Remember I said if you want to make money and have a waste product in the nutritional market, that's exactly where it came from. You're not selling that fish to a good restaurant. It's spoiled. Squeeze out the oil. It's basically a juiced fish. If you saw where that came from, you'd throw up. It's not anything natural. Now, you can eat the fish. That's okay. There's parents in the fish. Not a lot of them, but there's still his parents. And with fish oil, a cold water fish, 30 degree water, compared to a warm water fish, 70 degree water, there's 14 times more DHA, EPA in the cold water fish. So the less cold it is, the hotter it is, the less EPA, DHA you need. Well, what are these jackasses telling us to do? We're at 98.6 in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> That's a normal temperature, 98 degrees. Look at the dose they're giving us. It goes instantly rancid. Instantly. It is basically rancid the minute you get it. There's some measurement called P anisinine. That's an aldehyde level. Fish oil, the best in the world is 19. Toxic is 20. This is in the capsule. This is them saying how great this fish oil is. It's horrible the minute you get it. And then the minute it goes in the body, it's ruined. So what's it doing? It's taking all the antioxidants from the place it should be to counteract this super pharmacologic overdose you gave of this garbage that the body doesn't want. Now you have a deficiency of antioxidants somewhere else. Now something is going to go bad because they're not there. But 14 times less EPA, DHA. Dr. Rowan, my co-author, very, very big renowned interventional in, in, integrative medicine doctor. He's an MD. Told me that, and I was shocked when I pulled that article. 14 times less. So fish oil is antifreeze for a fish. There's only two things you can do. You can give it alcohol, which you'd have a drunk fish, so you can't do that. So if I threw you in 30 degree water, you're going to freeze. 
Well, you can't have the, the fish don't freeze. How the hell do they swim around? <laughs> so they have long chain fatty acids. They don't freeze. It's antifreeze for a fish. Are you living in 30 degree water? No. Are you part fish? Look in the mirror. I don't think a fish is just what you said. Where did such stupidity come from? A lot of money and a lot of time to con you. That's it. And it conned the doctors too. Hook, line, and sinker. It's the number one supplement in, in America. And now we're wrecking the world because the world follows us. I'm always yelling at people. America wrecks the world when it comes to medical science. We ruin them. They take what we tell them, which is always wrong. Everything we've done is wrong. Trans fats. Don't eat saturated fat. Told you there's no saturated fat in a clogged artery. Margarine. Gives you heart disease, gives you cancer. Medical profession told you to do it. And they never apologize. And it doesn't stop. They were telling women, do radical mastectomies, prophylactic, so you don't get breast cancer. That came out absolute garbage. Doesn't do anything. Did you ever see a retraction? You ever see an apology? No. They never apologize. They never say we're wrong. Aren't these people that were wrong telling you this stuff thrown in jail? Nothing. And new research shows. Who did the old research? Well, what, it's the same jackass giving me the new research now, and I'm going to believe you? It's horrible. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. I, I just go crazy when I see these papers, how stupid they are, how they don't make any sense. I mean, I used to look at 600 abstracts a week, and out of these things, it'd be three should even be written, and I already know the answer to two, and the other one is just stupid. It's wrong. You know, you could tell because I know the science. You should always know where it's going. See, a study should confirm the science, and it never does. Fish oil goes opposite. Fish oil makes my skin smoother. How? There's no fish oil in the skin. It's all parent omega-6. So how's it making it smoother? It can't. It can't. This is how bad it is. So I really hope you'll get the book. It'll tell you about the science. But these three supplements are life-changing to the conference I gave two weeks ago. Seventy physicians came on board. I've never had any kind of response like that. They were so thrilled I gave them the truth about the fish oil because they all had their patients on it, and they were petrified they're killing their patients. So they all converted to the parent essential oils, at least 70 so far. We think it's going to end up being 90 out of 200, which is incredible. Physicians typically don't like saying they made a mistake. They don't like saying that. Number one, they're open to liability, right, getting sued, but they typically don't like doing it. But in PEO Solution, I have a very big physician starting out with, I have a confession to make. He was using fish oil and he dumped it, so it's about three, four pages, but he's an honorable guy. He's one of the rare ones that wants to be right. He changed. Good question. It was all made up. Fish oil, that's, that was the original question. Where'd this come from? Waste product. Good question. One or two more? Yeah, it's a good question. Prophylactically, meaning there's nothing wrong with you, is about three grams a day. So I like capsules of about 725 milligrams. So one capsule per every 40 pounds per day. If there's nothing wrong with you. If you have heart disease, cancer, heart disease could be double. Cancer, triple for 90 days, and then you could cut back a little. But you can take double all the time if you have any kind of illness whatsoever. Dementia, or, or same thing with dementia. It just came out today in a medical publication that dementia is not the beta amyloid thing that they all thought. It's inflammation. Same problem. What about if, if you're taking uh, blood thinner? You have to can cut back on the blood thinner because, again, prostacyclin is a natural blood thinner. You're not going to need as much. So what I would do is I would add the oils and then get a blood test for a clotting time. They'll have the test for that. It's a very standard test. How, how fast blood clots. Yeah, and you'll be able to take less of the drug. Don't take less of the oils, you take less of the drug. You shouldn't even need any of the drug with these oils. I've never known anybody that needs it. But you never just stop taking a drug, you always wean yourself off. But get the test. Good question. Heart disease is the number one killer. Everybody, again, how are you not gonna have heart disease or cancer if you're getting adulterated oils? They're the prime cause, and we're doing it to ourselves. You can thank the food processors for that. They don't care. They just want food that doesn't go bad. Can't have cookies or cereal smelling like fish that's gone bad, can you? So I understand why they're doing it. 
So like I said, I'm, I'm about science, so I really encourage people to get the books. 24-Hour Diet, if you care about diets, and PEO Solution, General Health. Yeah, that was a screening study for heart disease, how much blood flow. You can measure it was called a photoplasmography. So you put your finger in, they shine, I think it's infrared light, a certain wavelength. So it can look at the hemoglobin and it can measure how fast it's going. So you can measure blood flow. And the higher the blood flow, the better. And the people taking the PEOs, significantly better. It was at least, on average, I think seven and a half years biologically younger just by taking the oils. In three and a half months, it was very quick. So it's, it's significant, three and a half month time frame. It's very significant. And this is a very acknowledged way of doing it. They don't do it in the doctor's office because they don't know what to do to increase blood flow. They don't have anything. So it's, why do I want to tell you? You got a problem. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> That's the problem here. It's used in Europe, but they don't have any answers either. So these oils are really revolutionary to fix so much. They're so fundamental. I mean, vitamins are absolutely nothing compared to these oils. These oils are number one, are, are 100. The next best thing is two. It, the difference is, so I've had doctors saying this is the equivalent of antibiotics. It's that strong, that strong. So just three products, and that's all anybody should need. So if somebody that has severe cases, I've got a, a father that's got um, cardiac, and he's in his blood real bad. Double the oils, and I would take double the liquid herbal. Okay. That's a blood purifier. Oh, within, w within two months, you should see a significant difference, or even a month. It's quick. Okay. Dementia, I, I'm convinced. I can't prove it. We haven't done a study on the thing yet, but scientifically wise, you have 100 million capillaries in the brain. Capillaries are very small blood vessels, straws. So picture 100 million of those suckers, they're all parent omega-6. If they're adulterated and clogged, you have no oxygen transfer and you have no nutrient transfer. That's where all the nutrients go. I'm convinced it's just cloggage of the brain. And the lack of the oils in the membrane, because they all have membranes, so the half protein, half lipid, the protein's just spilling out of the membrane, coming out of it. It's, it's pretty simple. In your studies, have you ever had people that have had strokes before tell you what, how it's affected? Absolutely. You, you shouldn't have any problem once, what, you, you know, once you're on this with it coming back. Absolutely. Yeah, lots. Lots. We've had, you have to have some horrible stimulus coming in if you're around paints if you're putting your hand in mineral spirits all the time, that's going to give you a problem. If you're walking through a radiation field, that's going to give you a problem. But outside of that, you take these oils, you should be as bulletproof as you can possibly be. I mean, I'm talking the 99.9%. .9%. We have very, very few people that have any illnesses taking these oils. And I've been doing this a long time. It's the biggest bang for the buck you will ever get. Years ago, he used to be on maybe Jan Michelson's show. Yeah, Jan, yeah. And he had a stroke. I know he did. <coughs> Have you ever given him any of your product since then or afterward? I, I, it's not my problem. I'm, I'm a scientist, so I don't have products. I have people that follow what I suggest in, in formulations. I can't tell if he took anything at all. Um, I don't know what to say. Oh, it's, it's a good, oh, it's a good question. He was a great guy. I've just never known anybody to have any cardiovascular problem that was taking the right amount of the oils consistently. And I'm talking 20 years, zero. But anything with fat in it, spend the money on organic. Bacon, butter, cheese, eggs, cream, spent, and obviously the cooking oil. That's where you want to spend the money. The pesticides, the hormones, and the meats make them well done, and it gets denatured, means it's inactivated, because I had that measured too. So I like steaks on the well done side, so even if there's estrogenic compounds in there, it make, negates them. So spend your money on anything that has fat, because that's where all the toxins go. So again, the eggs, bacon, butter, cheese, and cooking oils, 
spend the money on organic. It's worth it. You shouldn't get cancer or heart disease. That is not in our system. You're not programmed to get it. Any idiot telling you otherwise is an idiot. And I'll tell them that to their face. I have no problem with that. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. You don't need to be getting these diseases. They didn't exist in 1900. Inventor of the EKG was told, go back to Germany. We don't have heart disease here. It didn't happen until we put in the margarine-based diet. And they told you to stop eating butter. So the medical profession caused our rampant heart disease. What is the order of the Can you reverse stage four? The answer is, yeah, it's possible. It's tough. The answer is, yeah. Why a certain person didn't get it? Remember, you're 35% you're oxygen deprivation. So you get people with lung cancer that never even smoked. So it's not, <laughs> smoking is not a direct cause of cancer. That's more made up garbage. Um, but there's inflammation and heat from it. So there's obviously something that pushed them over. They could be at 30% deprivation and it's not cancer. So like I'm saying, how much adulterated food you ate could put you over the edge. So that's why the junk and the good stuff go in proportionately. So if I'm eating 50% junk, 50% of my cell structure is non-functional parent omega-6, you're in deep trouble. You're gonna get cancer. If you're eating 20% junk, you're not. You get 80% okay. Remember, you need 35% impairment of the oxygen. 20% is not gonna cause you a problem, as long as you're getting the good stuff in there. So there's a difference. But yeah, you need more of it, and you need some other things too. But it's doable. I have colleagues that have reversed stage four in every area. But they typically won't believe it. You know, that's the problem. When you get family and friends, um, they're not gonna believe anything you tell them. And with me, this is why I write. So you can read it. Hidden Story of Cancer, I forget how many hundred, I mean, it's, it's a big book. It's a big book, but it's phenomenal. It's all based on Warburg's work. And like I said, it's been translated in two languages. 7,000 copies were sold in the Netherlands, if you can believe that. It's a country the size of Rhode Island for $60 U.S. money. The book was $40, so it was a big book. But they banged it to 60 bucks with the dollar conversion. At least 6,000, if not 7,000 copies. I was, I was beside myself. One more. I don't know where they're coming up with that. How, how many years has he had it? Forever? I think he was five. Yeah, I'm saying forever. I don't know where they're coming up with a low-fat diet. That's stupid. Um, adulterated fat is going to inflame the pancreas. It inflames everything, but these organic oils should be perfect for them. And they, 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 80% of what physicians tell you to treat is proven ineffective and there's no medical basis for it. They just say it. Nobody wants to hear this because you always want to go, my doctor's the best. Well, why is he the best? Because he is. You don't want to ever go and go, my doctor knows next to nothing. That's the last thing anybody wants to know. If you really knew what most of them knew, it is next to nothing. And what they do tell you is wrong. And they're 20 years behind the times. Now, what I love is people that have high technical skill like a surgeon. In that case, you can say he's the best. How many have you done? How many bad outcomes? I only need to ask two questions. I've done 5,000, two people died. Other than that, they all were perfect. You're the best in the world, man. <laughs> I can quantify that, but that's a skill. That's a skill. But yeah, that's crazy. Oh, these oils are phenomenal for them. Well, I thank you for coming. It sounds like uh, the rain has let up. So take, take a look at the books out there, and uh, you know, I hope you'll consider those three products. Thanks for your time, and I'll probably be on again, Jeff's show, in six more months. With, with, with hopefully, we'll have the results of our uh, hospital trial in the expedited healing. So if you have any cuts, if you fall, any elderly relatives, you heal like you wouldn't believe. It's unbelievable how fast you heal. Thanks again. Thank you. My pleasure.